So we were looking at the implementations of a tree in Java, and uh, we said that uh, for the for the list of children, we have the choice between these three possible interpretations or implementations. The first one being a linked list. So you could use a linked list to represent the children of a particular node, or you could use an array list to uh, represent the children, or you could define your own pointers and represent the first child and next sibling. So this is called the first child next sibling implementation. Every one of these has advantages and disadvantages. If we're talking about the linked list implementation, the first one, of course it's going to be easier to program, and so is the case with the array list, because this is something provided to you. This is a, a list implementation provided to you by Java, and you don't have to worry about the, the details of, of the pointers and so on. You could just add using the functions provided to you, and remove also using the functions given to you. Uh, the only problem would be like in the linked list, there would be a wastage of memory because it is implemented as a doubly linked list uh, uh, data structure. When you look at the the children, we said that we don't really care. So if this was our list of children here, and this was our parent node. We don't really care about the previous. So when we're looking at a particular child, we don't care about what comes before it, which child was before. We only care about next sibling because we want to reach all the siblings that are underneath one parent. Uh, but but in the case of a linked list, it's actually providing you this this pointer, which you probably won't use. So there's a wastage of memory. And in the case of an array list, uh, because the implementation is based on a, an array, uh, we know that uh, from a previous video, adding elements to the to the array or removing elements, although easy for you as a programmer, uh, uh, underneath the hood is actually a lot of stuff is happening. And if you actually reach the limit of the array, then you're going to have to expand it, and this takes some time. Or, or if you remove an element from the beginning, then you're going to have to shift all your elements backwards. This is all taken care of uh, uh, for you by Java, but of course there's this 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 inefficiency. Uh, so the third the third implementation would be the best in terms of efficiency, but it would be harder to program because you're going to have to keep track of all these references: first child, next sibling. Um, so these are the, the the implementations, and we we remind ourselves we had the element itself and a. a uh, an optional parent node. Um, let's look at two, two tree operations. There are multiple operations when it comes to trees. We're going to look at uh, traversal and so on in, in, in next videos, but for now let's limit ourselves to two very simple ones. There's uh, calculating the depth of a node and the height of a node. So we defined these uh, in previous videos, and now let's see how we're going to implement them in, in Java, for example, or just look at the pseudocode, and we will notice that uh, Tree operations use a lot of recursion because, uh, uh, like we saw, a tree actually is defined recursively. We can define it recursively. So, uh, in case of the depth, we pass it a node. So, it will take a node and we'll compute a depth of that particular node in a tree. So, what will it do? It will look first, this is the base case, it will see if the node is a root. If it's root, then it returns zero. The depth is just zero. If it's not a root, then what it's going to do is it's going to add one and give you the the depth of the parent node. So when you're looking for the depth, like we said earlier, when you're looking for the depth of a particular node, what you're basically doing is you're looking upwards till the root. So if we were at this particular node, this is not a root node, so this is wrong, we get, we get to the else, we're going to add one plus, and then we're going to call depth on this node. And then we do the same thing again here, recursively. So this is not a root node, so we call, so we add one, and then we call uh, the, the depth function on this root node. And then once we reach this, then we get to the base case where we return 0. So this is going to be the addition of 1 plus 1, so 2. So there we have our uh, depth of this particular node. So the depth of this node is going to be 2, and which is right. Um, in terms of the height, it's about the same thing, but this time we're looking at it from another angle. Uh, to determine the height, you have to look downwards. You have to look at the, the, the leaf that's farthest away from you. So if we wanted to determine the height of the root node, so this is the base condition. If the node is a leaf, we stop and return 0, because the height of a leaf is 0. But if it's not, then we're going to have to get the maximum height of, of uh, our children. So we look at the first child here. And uh, for, so for every single child of that node, we're going to be calling our function height. And we're going to keep track of what it returns and get the maximum of it. And we're, keep, we're, we're incrementing one every time, and we, we get about the same result, and in the end it gives us the height.